Hello again, this is George from OGS Mechanics and OGS Mechanics Hybrid and EV. Here is the place where we fix cars, all type of cars, but mainly we are focusing on electric and hybrid vehicle. Stay close to see interesting repairs translated in video. 350 volt, that's high voltage. And we do have another interesting topic today in the workshop. It's a Volvo XC90, the Generation 2. Now, Generation 2 came on the market when 2015, and it was a massive transformation for Volvo because the new design was totally um, uh, improved. I mean, it was a different car altogether, but with the new look, with new design, obviously new technology came up and new problems. And then there are quite a few numbers of issues, but one of the main thing is the ERAD. So uh, this is on the T8 model. Basically, T8 stands for twin um, transmission. So basically, it has front um, drive of the combustion engine, rear drive of the electric motor. And here is the assembly that has to be dropped to work on the rear electric drive. Quite a comprehensive task. And you know what? It requires attention quite often. And more specifically, with the Generation 1 of ERAD. Generation 1, um, it was made from 2015, from inception, from releasing the model. And it should be on the market up to 2018, where the Generation 2 should uh, step in, which is going to be an upgraded version. And then as of 2022, it should be Generation 3 of ERAD, apparently clutchless. I have not seen one of them yet, but what I do have here is a Generation 1 with an issue. And I think it's worth mentioning quite a few points about it because it could help everyone understand better the technology, how to use and how to save money. So what was wrong with this one? This one had only a rear end noise. Now, when the ERADS fails on Volvos, um, you're going to have a clunking on the takeoff or an electric drive. You're going to have warning lights related with transmission coming on the dash up to a point where you're going to have no drive at all from the electric drive. So all our symptoms um, that can um, will tell you there's an issue with this assembly. So what is the electric drive? Well. <clears throat> ERAD stands for electric rear um, axle drive. Basically, is an electric motor, which is the component here, the three-phase electric motor, obviously controlled through an inverter and a control unit, and then is the mechanical side of it, which is the diff. And the problem, most of the time, lies within the differential. And at some point, the motor can be affected, but everything starts from those components. And let's go through, because is going to be something quite interesting um, to understand how does how does it operate. So, <clears throat> as I said, the electric drive is the motor puts um, um, power out and is down to these mechanisms here to transfer it to the wheels. And it has um, a mechanism, a normal diff in here, and then a coupling mechanism. Um, in here, that's an electromagnet. But let's start with the failure of it. So, most of the time, as we send several times, <coughs> this little bit here fails. This is a circuit. Now, from what we get, the cause of the failure is the heat that goes through all this mechanism. Uh, is estimated that sometimes can reach the temperature of um, over 120 degrees. Some point can also trigger an error code due to overheat. So it looks like the cooling is not very good. Now, who cools this mechanism? There's no coolant. It's only the oil. This is the oil that should be used on the um, rear diff. It's a transmission oil is um, just from, uh, from Volvo. Normally, the unit takes about 0 0.8. And an interesting fact is that Volvo initially said this is a lifetime. It doesn't need maintenance. Well, it's not really the case because these units were failing at a very high rate. Most of the time, the generation one way below 100,000 miles. 
and the cause of this it was the heat second cause is the usage and we'll get to that so the heat because yes the oil is the only component that cools down the system and because of how it operates here it does get everything gets a little bit hot there's a bit of friction and then we can see also how it degrades in the debris that is left left here so all this if you think about it goes in the mechanism goes in the bearings eventually it's like a very fine sand is not going to do well to the parts that they are rolling uh, like the bearings all the parts that are in motion <clears throat> 0 0.8 it should take so not a big quantity <clears throat> now it's been reportedly sometimes <clears throat> vehicles were drained and it was a lot less oil than 0 0.8 um, in the diff so it could be that from the factory they left with um, lower amount of oil possible we've seen some threads talking about that it is possible now obviously living lifetime is going to guaranteed direction for failure of the rod when it should be replaced well because it doesn't cost much it's not hard to be accessed i would say replace it every service it could definitely extend the life of the rod uh, system and let's not refer to a rod let's refer to differential because most of the time it's just this that is it fails so let's take a closer look to what happened to this <clears throat> this is um, the housing of the bearings if you can see there are marks it wasn't excessively noisy but it was noisy on rolling and this particular one had no engagement issues but look what we've done because we really want to understand how does everything operate so we have taken this mechanism apart so this is welded is like a converter we took it apart and i want to show you what is going on in here so so in here there's an electromagnet that operates which i'm going to power in a second and what it does here it's going to make those two components engage and when they, they do engage that's when the drive the motion from the electric motor it's sent to the wheel so just a simple engagement with a simple is he on see we pushed it out so that's <clears throat> that's what the magnet does and makes that coupling to engage and then um, this way um, the motion goes from the engine to the wheel from the electric motor to the wheels obviously <clears throat> high revs there's there are some components that wear out over the time causing all this um, low quantity of oil and oil degrades anyway you know there are many other transmission where say uh, oil is lifetime well how can it be because anything that's in motion is going to cause wear it's a simple low and then why will the engine why will the oil be lifetime because it does wear out it's going to degrade due to the temperature and so on and then um, uh, maintenance it's far less than replacement of uh, the parts and this is the case <clears throat> in here have a look the amount of dismantling that is required to get access to um, the diff which we have to replace because it was noisy now think about it if this could be extended by I don't know 20 30 40 thousand miles by replacing regularly the oil I think it makes a good difference and you put it in balance is a no-brainer why you, you would not replace if you know not replace the rear diff oil at every service because it could definitely extend the life of the erad now <clears throat> the bearings failure the circlip failure eventually mechanism failure in here in this particular one this is a part of the diff and it still operates fine but this one had no engagement issue so we cannot really find anything damaged in here but sometimes it could also fail in here when it stops um, operating altogether but what it does happen sometimes 
because of this little clip that breaks eventually gets into the front motor affecting the splines is gonna make this part unusable because as long as there's a crack you cannot rely on the part anymore it has to be replaced so <clears throat> that's gonna be added cost let me give you some figures for this the diff on its own 1500 pounds the electric motor three and a half thousand pounds oil about 31 pounds so it's easy to understand what why you should do um, some maintenance on this Volvo and don't wait until everything collapses. so face such an expensive repairs now we've talked about the lubrication about maintenance about um, this debris those flakes that affecting the bearings and, and everything in here but you know what else is a very important aspect in preventing this from happening the driving mode yes because those volvos they have different alternative of driving pure electric um, all-wheel drive hybrids um, and sport is one mode that wears everything much more than the other do you guess which one it is? I'm gonna leave you 10 seconds to find and leave a comment. Yes, one of those mods uses more, uh, brings more wear to the mechanism. And that mod is the hybrid mode. In theory, the hybrid mode is the most efficient because it kind of combines the combustion engine with the electric drive to get the most efficient way of driving, um, most efficient from the uh, economy point of view but that mode also brings a lot of wear to this because what it does constantly engage and disengage the mechanism engage and disengage engage and disengage because it's trying to achieve the perfect combination of electric drive combined with a combustion engine and on traffic is going to be this process is going to be repeated many many times it's going to bring a lot of wear to all these mechanisms. So pure drive or sport mode is gonna be a drive where this is gonna stay connected all the time. So the electromagnet is not going to operate, this is gonna stay all the time. So on a pure drive, this is gonna drive, obviously, as long as there's um, energy in the battery. When that stops, obviously, <clears throat> the combustion energy has to kick in but on the sport drive this is also going to stay um, connected on all with all wheel drive mode is going to stay connected all the time because it's going to combine both use of the electric drive and um, combustion engine so it's going to stay um, on all the time where on the hybrid is going to be on and off on and off and also on the regenerative braking this is going to apply also a lot of pressure so unfortunately the hybrid mode is the most efficient from an economy point of view, but when it comes to the pressure that applies on the, on the um, rear diff, is the one that is most damaging. Which way you should drive? Yeah, pure drive probably, as long as you have battery. And um, sport, if you're stuck in traffic, because that's apparently where it's a lot on and off, on and off. Um, on, in terms of operation, that's what is damaging. So I think if you know those things, the type of usage, hybrid, try to avoid it when you're stuck in traffic. So either go for purer drive or move to sport. Don't leave a lot of engagement on and off. That's gonna be secondary. Mainly, main, first point is the oil. Make sure you do replace the oil every service. When you should do the service, you know, this long life, 20,000 miles, yeah, they could last. I strongly advise do it 10,000 miles. So it's not a big cost, but it means a lot for reliability of the motor. So of the um, combustion engine and also have uh, the rear diff replaced at the same time. Not a big cost and you can save a big bill because on this one, look what we have to replace.
those are the components everything new uh it'll probably be a bit hard for me to take it out but let's see i'm just trying this is the new part that has to take place and i was just looking if it says error two because in theory the replacement parts they should have an upgraded um, engagement mechanism that should prevent issues like this from happening we're not going to sip we're going to install it straight away and this is going to be uh, the fix on this volvo all the suspension has to go up i said already significant um, piece of um, repair if you think about it that could be avoided with a bit of knowledge let me know what is your experience with the volvo error system let me know if i missed anything on this technical let me know if you liked the video and if you did give me a thumb up um, leave me a comment don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button because we have interesting videos every week with real repairs from the workshop. I will see you next time.